Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Lauren Henry and I'm the fashion architect. In this video, I'll be showing you how to draft the bodice block from scratch like a pro. Emphasis on like a pro. So for those who are new to pattern making, the bodies block is basically your body on paper and it's created using the measurements of your body or dress form. And from this, you can make jackets, you can make dresses, you can make blouses, corsets, in fact, anything relating to your upper body. And to create it, you actually need measurements so you need a specific set of measurements to do this and i know that a lot of us might not know some of them because you know i've heard people mention different measurements or i've seen people um use certain measurements i'm like is that all you're using <laughs> but then to make a block you need way much more and it is for this reason that i've decided to introduce something amazing drum roll please <laughs> Okay, so tell me, have you always wanted to learn how to take proper body measurements? Have you also wanted to learn how to draft the blocks, the sleeve block, the dress block, the bodice block, the skirt, and maybe even the trouser? Then I have created the perfect course for you. In this course, you're going to learn how to draft the blocks like a pro. And I know that a lot of people have found hacks, you know, on how to do these things. I've seen different things online. And yeah, there's the okay way to do things and then there's the professional way to do things. And best believe that the fashion architects will only teach you the professional way of doing things. So in this course, you're going to learn how to do it like a pro. You're going to learn how to um, test for fit because you can't just do stuff on paper and expect it to fit perfectly. You must always test for fit. And I know that fitting is another, is a whole other different topic that we would, I would discuss sometime on this channel. But in this, in this course, we will talk about fit to testing for fit. We'll talk about um, troubleshooting. And why would I say troubleshooting? So our bodies are different and how you would approach drafting a block for, it, for a plus size person, for example, and it's and a smaller person are totally different and uh, maybe not totally different but there's certain differences you know that you will do there's certain differences or requirements for each one you also get a handbook for this course because it's a whole you know you'll be learning a whole lot there's a lot of information a lot of instructions a lot of details that you can keep in your head at once during the time duration of the course so you're going to get a handbook that you can always make reference to isn't that amazing so you would find the link to sign up for this course in my description box and if you're on instagram then you find it in my bio let me just say that as a fashion tutor for, of many years i've been teaching pattern making for for, for a couple of years now and i've taught over 200 people yeah i've taught over 200 the number is probably even more than that but i've taught at least i know that i've taught over 200 people and it's been amazing they've all loved it they've all learned how to make the blocks and i believe that they are doing very well now so please for this fact for this reason you need to sign up you truly do not want to miss it so please do not forget to sign up i feel like i've said a lot already enough of the chit chat let's get into today's video where i show you how to draft the bodies block from scratch like a pro let's get into it so to start this video i'm going to first show you all the tools you would need the first thing you need is a pattern master now this has the ruler the curves and everything you need to make patterns and the next thing you need is a ruler so this is calibrated it has the inches and then the centimeters and for this draft we'll be using a lot of centimeters um next tool you need is the armhole curve so this is a specialized curve just for armholes it has that curved part that you use to draw the armhole and of course the pattern master has the curve but then we it's good to have that the next tool is a tracing wheel so you use this to transfer lines or points from one pattern to another and we'll be using that for this draft the tracing wheel is very important when drafting any pattern and so it's a must have and the next tool would be the paper scissors so this is important and it's called a pair of paper scissors because it is specifically used for paper and nothing else so you cannot use the rule is do not use your fabric scissors for paper and don't use your paper scissors for fabric so i'd like to add this protect your scissors especially your fabric scissors at all costs do not let people use your scissors for 
other things please so let's move on to the next tool next we need masking tape so of course masking tape is used to tape paper tape two pieces of paper together and this is very important for this draft you see why we would need it later the measuring tape now this is important of course to measure lines measure distances and also even to measure the figure the figure that you're working on whether it's a dress form or a particular person's body so these are the tools we need for this draft you have your pattern master the ruler the armhole curve the tracing wheel the paper scissors your masking tape your measuring tape and then finally your pencil and of course don't forget we also need paper so i'm using an a1 size paper here and now we can go ahead and start this draft so the first thing we need to do is to draw the margins for the block and I like to give 5cm border lines. So 5cm from the edge of the paper on the left and on the top. So if you notice I'm measuring 5cm, I'm going to draw a line to give me that margin. I'm doing another 5cm now from the top of the paper. And I would say that your paper should be in landscape mode, that's horizontally instead of portrait mode, which is vertical. So if you see my paper is in landscape mode now, and that's how we'll draft. So I've measured my 5cm from the left edge and the top edge, and I'm then going to draw my vertical. supposed to do is to square out so now the whole point of squaring is using your set square to create a straight line from another existing straight line so basically you make sure that you place the set square of your pattern master which is for me it's that 90 degrees angle i'm going to place it on on one line on an existing straight line to create another straight line so basically we're trying to create two perpendicular lines that's how it is called mathematically so that's the 90 degrees angle and i'm going to square out now making sure that the set square is sitting exactly on that line to give me that 90 degrees angle and then i'm going to draw the horizontal line now so that is it i've squared out a line i've created a horizontal line from an existing straight line and i'm just going to extend that line now to the end of the paper so this way we have created two parallel lines now the whole point is that if 0 to 1 is 37 cm then even from this edge of the paper to this line of 1 would still be 37 cm that's that's what it means for two lines to be parallel so our next point is 0 to 2 and this is the bust measurement plus ease divided by 2. Now ease is the room for movement that you add to your measurement just you know to have that extra room where clothes don't feel tight but they're just fitted. And the ease we're using here is 6cm so we're going to add 92cm plus 6cm which is the ease we're using here that is 98 and 98 divided by 2 is 49 cm so uh, 0 to 2 is 49 cm and we're going to measure from point 0 to get 2 on the horizontal line so that's what i'm about to do now from point 0 i'm going to measure 49 cm on that horizontal line and mark and that would be my point 2. now from point 2 we're supposed to square down to point 
3 so using the set square I'm going to square down from 2 to get point 3 you can see what I'm doing I'm using my set square as always I'm just trying to find the perfect point yeah so from 2 I would square down to that line 1 to get point 3 now as i said earlier make sure your set square is sitting exactly on the line just so that you get an actual straight line so that's what i'm checking here and i believe it's sitting on the line now and it, it's time to draw so it's good for you to to check and cross check your work because when you make a mistake you can't go back so that's my point three and we have gotten our box next we need to divide the box into two halves so that we get the front side and the back side so basically we're dividing zero to two and one to three into two so if you remember my zero to two was 49 cm and half of it would be 24.5 cm so i'm just going to mark that 24.5 and this is not a point you would label you just need to mark it and then you would square down from that point or you can simply measure the same 24.5 from point one to that to find that mid area so i've just marked that i'm going to connect the two points with a line that way i'll divide the box i have right now into two that's getting the front and then the back and what we have right now it's even the body divided by two so we have half of the front and half of the back so that's what we have we have the half of the back and then half of the front on the right so this is where we're going to work from that's the center back and then this here is the center front and that's where the side seam would happen so after doing this the next point we need to get is 0.4 and 0.5 and how we get this is by dividing our bus measurement by four so my bus measurement is 92 and 92 divided by 4 would give me 23 cm so 92 divided by 4 is 23 cm and i'm going to place that now on the pattern so i'll measure 23 cm from 0 downwards on the vertical line i'll just mark that 23 that's 23 cm and label that 0 0.4 and i'm going to do the same thing from 0.2 it will still be the same 23 cm now don't forget 0 to 4 and 2 to 5 is the bus measurement divided by 4 so it is that measurement that gave me 23 and now that i'm measuring from 0 to get 4 and from 2 to get 5. next i'm just going to connect the two points with a line Now my next point is 2 to 6 that is the neck measurement divided by 5 minus 1 cm and my neck measurement is 36 so 36 divided by 5 is 7.2 and 7.2 minus 1 is 6.2 so that's 6.2 cm i'm going to measure that from point 2 to the left that would give me my point 6 so 6.2 cm from point 2 to the left would give me my point 6 now don't let the figures confuse you it's just mathematics so that's 0. 0.6 and next is 2 to 7 2 to 7 is the neck measurement divided by 5 so that would be 7.2 cm i'm going to measure 7.2 cm from 0. 0.2 
measurement is 35 cm so 37 minus 35 that's 2 cm i'm just going to measure 2 cm from 0 downwards and that's my point 9 now i'm just going to draw my back neck curve using the armhole curve of my pattern master but of course i'm going to start with a guideline just as we did for the front you start a guideline from point 9 just so that the curve ends flat and then it's time to draw the back neck curve and please notice the placement of my curve notice the way i place it this is how you draw the back neck curve now we finished off with the neck curves we have the front neck curve and then the back neck curve and you see what they look like they're definitely different and now we're moving we're moving on to point 10 we have 2 to 10 which is the shoulder to bust point measurement and now my shoulder to bust point measurement is 26 cm so i'm going to measure 26 cm from point 2 downwards 26 cm from point 2 downwards would give me point 10 and like i said it is a shoulder to bust point measurement now that i'm going to just label that point 10 and then i would square inwards towards the side seam from point 10 you square inwards towards the side seam now i have a a set square in the middle of my pattern mask and that's what i'm using to square so i've drawn that line and that's my point 10 and the next point is 10 to 11 it is the bus distance which is bus point to bus point divided by 2 and mine is 19 cm so 19 divided by 2 is 9.5 i'm just going to measure that 9.5 cm and mark and that's my point 11 and point 11 is the bust point so yeah take note of that and the next point is 2 to 12. Now, 2 to 12 is the front cross shoulder measurement divided by 2. The front cross shoulder is basically your shoulder bone to shoulder bone from the front. It's what you're used to measuring from the back, but this time around, you measure from the front. It's called the front cross shoulder, the distance between one shoulder bone to another shoulder bone. That is the front cross shoulder measurement. So mine is 37 cm and I'm going to measure, divide 37 cm by 2. That would give me 18.5 cm. So I'm going to measure 18.5 cm from point 2 to the left on the horizontal line. So from point 2, I'm measuring 18.5. I'm just going to mark that now and I'll label that point 12. And after getting point 12, we now I need to square down by 4 cm. I'm squaring down by 4 cm to get the shoulder slope. So our shoulders are not straight. We all have slanted shoulders. So you square down by 4 cm to get that shoulder slope. And then you connect that 4 cm that we squared down to point 6 with a slanted broken line i'm going to draw the broken lines now i can see and this is not the actual shoulder this is going to help us get our shoulder but this is what the shoulder slope looks like for the front and now the next point is 0 to 13 0 to 13 is the back cross shoulder measurement divided by 2 and the back cross shoulder is what you're used to where you measure from one shoulder bone to another shoulder bone is what you call the shoulder measurement and this is what we're going to divide by two and then you measure from point zero to the right so mine is 39 cm and so 39 divided by two will give me 19.5 so i'll measure 19.5 cm from zero to the right so that's my 19.5 cm and then i'll label that point 13 and then after doing that i'll square down by 3.5 cm to get the shoulder slope for the back so i'm squaring down by 3.5 cm to get the shoulder slope of the back and then you connect it to point 8 with a slanted broken line and that's the shoulder slope for the back so that's the front and the back we've done that 
like i said this is not the shoulder but we're working towards getting the shoulder and now the next point is 6 to 14 6 to 14 is the shoulder length divided by 2 now the shoulder length is measured from the highest point of the neck to the shoulder bone is just that short distance between your neck and your shoulder bone and mine is 12 cm so 12 divided by 2 is 6 and i'm going to measure 6 cm from point 6 and i'll mark that on the slanted broken line so from point 6 i would measure 6 cm because my shoulder length is 12 and divided by 2 would be 6 and i'll label that point 14 so that is it and then you will connect point 14 to point 11 with a straight line now this line is the first leg of our front shoulder dart line 14 to 11 is the first leg of our front shoulder dart the next point is 14 to 15 now 14 to 15 is the shoulder length divided by 2 minus 1 or 2 cm now the subtraction of 1 or 2 cm depends on the bust volume so for a fuller bust for a fuller bust volume you subtract 1 cm from that shoulder length divided by 2 and then if it's a smaller bust you're working on you subtract 2 cm from the shoulder length divided by 2 now my shoulder length is 12 cm divided by 2 that will be 6 if i have a fuller bust or if i'm working on a fuller bust i'll subtract one cm that's six minus one five but if i have a smaller bust i'll subtract two cm so that's six minus two which is four cm and now because i know that um my measurement is for a smaller bust i'm going to subtract two cm from that six six being my shoulder length divided by two so it means that the distance from my 14 to 15 would be four cm the principle you should have in mind is the fuller the bust, the wider the dart. And then the smaller the bust, the smaller the dart. So now I need to measure 4 cm from point 14. Following that slanted line, we need to measure 4 cm from that line. Since the measurement I'm using for 14 to 15 is 4 cm, I've marked it and that's point 15. Then you connect point 15 to point 11 with a straight line. Now, this is the second leg of our front shoulder dart. We've basically done our dart. Now, the next point is 8 to 16. 8 to 16 is a shoulder length divided by 2. Don't forget, my shoulder length is still 12 cm. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So, I'm going to measure 6 cm from point 8 on that slanted broken line. I'm going to mark that point now and label that point 16. then the next point is 16 to 17 16 to 17 is a standard 1.5 cm this is the width of the back shoulder dart 1.5 cm to the right of point 16 you label that point 17 and now point 18 is at the midpoint of 16 and 17 and if 16 17 is 1.5 half of it would be 0 0.75 cm so you measure 0 0.75 cm from 16 to the right so basically just at the midpoint 0 0.75 you mark that and that will be the point 18 point 18 is simply the middle leg of that dart that we're trying to create here now that we've got in point 18 we're going to square down from that point 18 by 8 cm to get point 19 so we square down following that slanted line please you have to make sure it is following the slanted line because a when you square down from a slanted line to give you another slanted line do you understand so i'm using this part of my the set square at the middle of my pattern master to place on the line at point 18 on that slanted line at point 18 and then i'm going to square down by 8 cm so you see i'm squaring down by 8 cm and that would be my point 19. now that we have point 19 you will connect that to point 16 and 17 and we have created the back shoulder dots so the next thing we need to do is to draft our actual shoulder lines like i said earlier these are not our actual lines this just helped us get the slopes of the shoulder and to get the actual shoulder lines now we need to close these dots so i'll start by i'll start with the front dots i would close 
um, I'll need to fold line 14 and place it over line 15 just watch me as I do it so 14 over you fold that line and fold it over 15 that's what we're doing so I'm just flipping my paper to be able to do that I'm folding line 14 just watch me as I do that I'll fold line 14 you know you have to try to crease your paper but you don't have to get all the way to the boss point remember point 11 is the boss point so now i've placed it over line 15. this is just um simulating how you would sew your darts this is your dart when you've sewn it and please try not to force the paper just fold and place and don't force the points to meet so that's point 14 and 15 don't force them to meet you just need to place them on the same line and draw that line so now i've closed it i'm going to take my ruler now and place at point six so i need to make sure that that line follows the broken line from point six so the idea is you're placing your ruler from zero you know the beginning of your ruler you're placing it from point six and make sure it follows that broken line and then you will draw out your shoulder length so my shoulder length is 12 cm and i'm just going to draw out a line of 12 cm and mark so this is now my actual shoulder can you see this is my actual shoulder line after points 14 it does not follow the broken line anymore now i'm just taking my tracing to trace over that fold to be able to get the dart head this that i'm doing here is called blending so please just trace enough and you see the markings will show it looks like an upside down v i'm just going to draw that out now and you would see what it really looks like so this is it this is my dart head now i have completed my dart i'm just going to draw the middle leg of my shoulder dart back to point 11 and my dart is done yay and then you need to label the end of your shoulder is point 20 so you just label that 20 yeah so now we'll move to the back now just like the front we're going to fold 16 over 17 you know how we folded for the front folded 14 over 15 now for the back we're folding 16 over 17 so you just fold that short line of 16 and place it over 17 then you would again take your ruler and your pencil place your ruler from point eight this time around make sure that the beginning of your ruler sits on point eight follow the broken line up to where the fold happens and then draw out your shoulder length so for me my shoulder length is 12 cm i'm just going to draw out that 12 cm line from point eight Now this is my actual back shoulder line i'm just going to mark label the end of that line point 21 that's point 21 and it's time to trace i'll take my tracing wheel and trace over the fold i'm going to trace over the fold now this one is not as obvious as the front it's just a slight raise but you also need to draw that so i'm going to draw that now and you'll see it it would barely be obvious so you see it looks almost straight but this is the back shoulder dart now we've completed the shoulders we have our uh, shoulder darts also it's time to move on now to the chest region now to start this we need 2 to 22 now 2 to 22 is a distance from 2 to 5 divided by 2 plus 1 cm so my 2 to 5 was 23 so 23 divided by 2 is 11.5 and plus 1 that's 12.5 so i'm going to measure 12.5 from point 2 downwards to give me point 22 so 12.5 cm from 2 downwards will give me point 22 i'm just going to mark that now so now point 22 gives us the position where our chest width would fall so the chest width is basically the mid area between your neck and your bust and this is where it falls and now we need to get 22 to 23. 22 to 23 is the chest width measurement divided by 2 plus 0 0.5 cm. So my chest width meaning is the measurement of my mid arm hole to the other mid arm hole. Now that measurement divided by 2 minus 34 divided by 2 that's 17 plus 0 0.5 that's 17.5. So now I'm going to square out from point 
22 by 17.5 cm with my darts closed that's the reason why i'm closing this dart i'll square out from point 0.22 yeah this is where you might need masking tape to just hold on the paper but i'm a pro so i'm used to it <laughs> anyway so now i'm squaring from my point 0.22 by 17.5 cm i have to make sure i place my set square on that point 22 so i must place my set square at point 22 making sure it's following that line where 22 is and then i'll square out by 17.5 cm so this is where my chest width ends i'm going to flip back my paper and open up the darts because i don't need it closed my darts no darts on paper should ever be closed unless you're moving it somewhere but that's just for another day and another video anyways i'm labeling that point 23 because that's the end of my chest width but we're making progress we're making progress so the next point now is 0 to 24 now 0 to 24 is the distance between 0 to 4 divided by 2 plus 1 cm is the exact measurement as 2 to 22 do you understand it is still 0 to 4 divided by 2 plus 1 cm and that's exactly what we did for 2 to 22 and their distances are equal so i'm just going to measure 12.5 cm again from 0 downwards and mark that point 24 so this is where my back width line is going to fall the back width is basically the mid armhole at the back to the other mid armhole the one for the left to the one on the right anyway so now we'll move to 24 to 25 that's the back width measurement divided by 2 plus 0 0.5 cm now my back width measurement is 38 divided by 2 is 19 plus 0 0.5 that's 19.5 so i'll square out from 24 by 19.5 cm i know it feels like a lot but this is why you should really get my course <laughs> anyway so that is point 25 you just mark that and then last now we'll just locate point 26 at this point the middle of the block so is that line that intersects between that middle vertical line and then line four five that is point 26 this is called the underarm point that's where your armhole ends basically so now that we've gotten point 26 we can then draw our armhole curves would we'll connect 20 23 and 26 for the front and then 21 25 and 26 for the back to get our armhole curves i'm going to use my armhole curve now to do this so now i'm doing the front i'm connecting 21 to 23 and then to 26 no more like 20 to 23 and 26 pardon me <laughs> anyway so now i'm just drawing the curve yes so you are the master of your curve you have to make it work you really have to make sure that all the points connect and i'm going to try for the back and yeah i noticed that this particular ammo curve was not giving me something great it was not giving me a nice curve so i decided that i was going to use my the ammo curve of my pattern master instead yes yeah, so i'm using this armhole curve instead of the other one that one was a bit too curved for me but this is better for this particular curve so i'm just going to connect point 21 to point 25 and then 26 which are the points of my back armhole so i'm making sure that they're all meeting remember i said that they all the points have to meet and you are the master of your curve so if it's not meeting you gotta make it meet this is what i tell my students all the time you are the master of your curve so now i've got seeing the right curve and i've connected and look what it looks like see what it looks like it's a perfect back armhole and front armhole and together they make a beautiful armhole curve so yeah in my class i would also explain to you troubleshooting and techniques because sometimes your armhole curves will not be this perfect so this is why you also need to sign up for my class so many reasons to sign up for my class so yeah you can see that we're getting there it's looking great and uh, we finished the top part we just need to do the bottom part which is mostly the darts at the waist so the next position we need to get is 3 to 27 now this is not your waistline this line you see here is not your waistline 
so to get the waistline we need 3 to 27 and 3 to 27 is the front body length measurement minus the back body length measurement so my front body length is 42 cm while my back body length is 37 cm so 42 minus 37 is 5 cm i'm just going to square down from point 3 now by 5 cm so that's what i'm doing here well, I decided to use my pattern master instead. So I'm just squaring down from 0.3 now by 5 cm. This is easier for me because I'm sure that I'm squaring because I have a set square. So that's my 0.27 now. And the next thing I'm going to do is to connect 27 to 0.1 with a straight line. So of course the line will be slanted, but I'm going to use a long ruler now to connect 27 to 1. So this is my meter ruler. Please don't mind the fact that it's a bit rusty. That's what metal does <laughs> so i'm connecting 27 to point one now with a line this is now my actual waistline this is where my waist will fall because now I have my front body's length taken into consideration. And finally, it's time for me to create the darts and the darts will be created on that waist. So if you've been paying attention, we've not used our waist measurement for anything at all. What we used to get the width of this block was our bust measurement. So it's time to take into consideration our waist measurement. What we need to do here is called waist suppression. It is basically your bust measurement plus ease. So remember we added ease to our bust measurement when we started, 0 to 2. So that bust measurement plus ease divided by 2 minus your waist measurement plus ease divided by 2. Two. So it's the bust measurement plus ease divided by 2 minus waist measurement plus ease divided by 2. So my bust measurement is 92 cm and the ease added was 6 cm. So that's 92 plus 6 which is 98. 98 divided by 2 will be 49. Well my waist measurement is 76 and the ease that I'll add here would be 3 cm because the ease in the waist is always half of whatever you added to the boss so if the ease in the boss is 6 cm then the ease in the waist would be 3 cm so that's 76 plus 3 which is 79 divided by 2 that would be 39.5 so basically now i'm going to subtract 49 minus 39.5 that is 9.5 cm so basically my suppression is 9.5 cm so the idea here is that we need to take out 9.5 cm from this line from this new waistline that we have to be able to give us the fits that we require in the waist and the only way to do that is by creating darts so we're going to create darts now using this 9.5 cm that we're supposed to take our taking this 9.5 cm as darts and we're going to share these darts between the front the side seam and the back but you have to make sure that you give the front more so if i'm sharing 9.5 i would have four for the front three for the side seam and 2.5 cm for the back basically four three 2.5 for the front the side seam and the back now the next thing i'm going to get is 27 to 28 i've gotten my suppression so we need to move 27 to 28 is the bus distance measurement divided by 2 my bus distance was 19 divided by 2 that's 9.5 i've drawn that gotten 28 and you connect it to point 11 next you need to share your front that suppression remember our front that suppression is 4 cm so we need to share that 4 cm on both sides of line 28 so that's 2 cm 2 cm and you connect to point 11 so my front dart is 4 cm in total and you label that point 29 and 30. next you just extend this middle line this side seam line to meet the new waist and then you label that point 31 that's point 31 then next you would share your side seam suppression our side seam suppression is 3, so that's 1.5, 1.5. You label that 32 and 33. And you connect these points to point 26. So we've gotten our side seam darts. It's, our block is almost done. 
and finally we would move to the back the next point is 1 to 34 1 to 34 is the distance between 1 to 31 divided by 2 minus 0 0.5 cm so you measure your 1 to 31 and then you divide by 2 so i'm measuring that and what i have there is 24.5 divided by 2 that will give me 12.25 and minus 0 0.5 it will give me 11.75 so i'm going to measure 11.75 from point 1 now to the right that's my 11.75 i'll mark that and that is point 34 after getting point 34 the next thing you need to do is to share your back that suppression and my dark back that suppression is 2.5 cm so that's 1.25 cm on both sides of point 34 we need to measure 1.25 cm on both sides of point 34 that's done and then i'll label that point 35 and 36 and now our final point is point 37 point 37 is the same measurement as 1 to 34 so that's still 11.75 i measure 11.75 to the right and i would mark and that is my point 37 i would label that and then connect point 34 35 and 36 to point 37 and my back dot is three so we'll close line 32 over line 33 like so and then blend so they would never meet because of that dot happening there the lines will not meet and that's why we must blend so i'm going to blend 32 now into 33 you see using my curve I just blend please also take note of how i place my curve it's important but here i'm not going to trace because for the side seam is not a dart that we sew we cut through it so all we need to do is to blend you know fill up that line that is missing and that's all you do in the side seam just blending no tracing so for the back we're going to do what we did for the front we would fold line 
35 over line 36 35 over 36 so i folded 35 now and i'm going to place it over 36 and now i would blend so i'm going to blend line 35 into line 36 using my curved ruler done that now and then i'm going to take my tracing wheel and trace over the fold again and i will have my dart head i'm just going to use my ruler to connect the lines and that's done this here is how to draft the basic bodies block so now i've separated the front from the back just so i can add the sewing allowance and i'm going to do that right now to all of the parts that i need the side seams the shoulder and the center back for the um twirl i'm about to create a twirl is basically a sample of the of the of the pattern just so i can test the fit i will add allowance to these areas but i won't add to the armhole because i need to see where to sit so to the armhole and the waist i will not add allowance so just watch me add allowance i'm doing 2 cm 2 cm on side seam 1.5 on the shoulders and then 1.5 cm at the center back that's what i'm doing for the twelve of course the center front is on full so i'm not going to add any allowance there i also don't need to add allowance to the neckline because i also need to see that it fits perfectly so you just add the allowances as i have done and then you can cut on fabric so this now is a pattern it's no longer a block because i've added allowance i'm ready to cut on fabric just cutting out the pattern now so that i have it you know ready for fabric on fabric sew it up making sure i also sew the dots and this would be the final result voila so this is my block all sewn up in a twirl and the fit is perfect you see where my, where the waist of the twirl sits is the natural waist and then where my trouser waist is is called waist 1b so these are a few of the measurements you get to learn from my class and i just love everything about this block it's just perfect and from this i can create any and everything a jacket blouse whatever i want to create i can use this to do it so yay so that's the end of the video thank you for watching and i hope you learned i hope you learned a few things like i know it's impossible for you to you know know how to do this from this video the whole point of the video was to show you how i create the bodies block and to show you how you can also do that and that's the reason why you need to sign up for my course where you also learn to do it yourself where you get the resources you would have all of the instructions you do not need to keep it in your head you would have you know the details you have the information on how to create it and you can create a whole lot you can create a multiple of them using the resources i would give you so please do not forget to sign up for the course and also this will be the first time i'll be showing my face on youtube and on instagram so yay this is the fashion architect and it's so lovely to finally be in your face please do not forget to like this video subscribe to my channel because there's a whole lot coming this year i would you would see me a whole lot on youtube please subscribe 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 and even hit the notification bell so you do not miss a video so see you in the next video take care